Hello students, welcome to the online lectures. Today we will see the PDF of our chapter number 2 which I have shared you in the previous to previous lecture. I hope you have written that PDF in your notebook. So firstly we will discuss that PDF and then we will jump to chapter number 3. So let's discuss the question answer which I have given in the end of chapter number 2. So let's start with the question number 1. Name the major nutrients in our food as we have discussed in the lecture and I have also shown you the main 7 nutrients which required by our food are the answer. The answer is the major nutrients in our food. The major nutrient in our food are named carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals. In addition, food contains dietary fibers and water which are also needed by our body. Name the major nutrients in our food. Answer is the major nutrients in our food are named carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals. In addition, food contains dietary fibers and also water which are also needed by our body. Question number 2. Name the following. The nutrient which mainly give energy to our body that is carbohydrates and fats. The nutrients which give energy to our body is carbohydrates and fats. The nutrients that are needed for the growth and maintenance of our body is proteins. So if we have to grow and if we have to maintain our body we have to take proteins in our diet. The nutrients that are needed for the growth and maintenance of our body is protein. A vitamin required for maintaining good eyesight. We have seen one table in which we have discussed if a certain vitamin is not there then which disease can be formed. From that table you can understand that if vitamin A is not present in your body then you can have a disease related to eyesight. So the a vitamin required for maintaining good eyesight vitamin A. A mineral that is required for keeping our bones healthy calcium in the table that also was given a mineral that is required for keeping our bones healthy is calcium the next question is name two foods each rich in fats starch dietary fiber and protein so the food which is rich of fats are ghee, butter, milk, eggs, etc. The food which is rich of fats are ghee, butter, milk, egg, etc. Starch. Now, where the starch is present in potatoes, sugar, rice, etc. Okay. The starch is present mainly in potatoes, sugar, rice, etc. Dietary fibers which are useful in digestion of our food are present in vegetables and fresh fruits. Okay, dietary, dietary fiber is present in vegetables and fresh fruits. Protein. Protein is present in milk, beans, eggs and cheese. The protein is present in milk, beans, egg, cheese, etc. So here now we have completed three questions. Major nutrients in our food. Name the following nutrients. Name two foods of each vitamins. Now next is question number four. True or false? So the first one A is by eating rice alone 
वी कैन फुलफिल न्यूट्रिशनल रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ अवर बॉडी वी हैव डिस्कस ओनली ईटिंग अ सर्टेन आइटम कैन नॉट बी अ गुड बैलेंस डाएट सो द स्टेटमेंट इज रॉन्ग डेफिशियंसी डिजीज कैन बी प्रिवेंटेड बाय अ बैलेंस डाएट दैट वॉज अवर समरी ऑफ द चैप्टर इफ वी हैव अवर अ डाएट बैलेंस्ड देन वी कैन प्रिवेंट डेफिशियंसी डिजीजेस तो सो द स्टेटमेंट इज ट्रू बैलेंस्ड डाएट फॉर द बॉडी should contain a variety of food item i had already said for the first statement we need different kind of food items balanced diet for our body so the balanced diet for the food for the body should contain a variety of food item that is a true statement meat alone is sufficient to provide all the nutrients of the body as we have discussed earlier we need variety of food to prevent the deficiency diseases to prevent the unbalanced diet so the statement is false question number 5 filling the blanks dash is caused by the deficiency of vitamin d in your textbook the table is given which i have shown in you in the previous to previous lecture of chapter number 2 from that we can find that rickets rickets is caused by deficiency of vitamin d deficiency of dash b deficiency of dash causes a disease known as beriberi so the answer is deficiency of b1 deficiency of b1 causes a disease known as beriberi c definition uh, deficiency of vitamin c causes a disease known as answer is scurvy deficiency of vitamin c cause a disease known as scurvy night blindness is caused due to defini- uh, deficiency of dash in our food answer is vitamin a deficiency due to vitamin a and the deficiency disease is night blindness so this were the question answer i have given you in the pdf okay let's finish the remaining chapter the remaining portion of our chapter number 3 but before that let's take a quick look what we have done in our last lecture so so variety in fabrics in which activity 1 and activity 2 was discussed fiber and activity 3 some plants fiber were also uh, seen the story of the shopkeeper pelli and bojo varieties of clothes varieties of fabric they have seen in the market okay the tailor shop activity i hope you have read, you have did it and got some knowledge about different fabrics then this activity of pulling yarn out of a cloth then introduction to fibers cotton fiber synthetic fiber yes this splitting the yarns into thin strands which are called fibers okay so natural fibers wool silk fiber this all we have studied from where which fibers we are getting so this question i have asked you okay i know many of you have searched in the internet and will be knowing that this this item which is worn by the uh, warriors in the war are made up of iron they are very heavy but they are wearing because of because they need protection from the enemies 
some plant fibers cotton we have seen what is called wick oil lamp wool uh, pillows where we are seeing cotton fibers origin of cotton fibers we have seen they are grown in the field black soil and the number i have told you to write number of states or number of con uh, number of states where cotton is grown i hope you have written it how the cotton is being separated by combing or by using machine and the last topic which we have covered is jute this is also a fiber jute fiber which we get from the jute plant and we get in a rainy season okay so starting today's lecture by the next topic spinning cotton yarn hold some cotton wool in one hand pinch one cotton between the thumb and four finger as you can see in the figure yes here you have to hold pinch some cotton between the thumb and the four finger of the other hand and now as shown in figure gently start pulling out uh, out the cotton while continuously twisting the fiber okay so what you have to do hold some cotton wool in one hand pinch some cotton between the thumb and four finger on the other hand now gently start pulling out the cotton while continuously twisting the fibers are you able to make a yarn as we know that yarn is made up of uh, twisting the all fibers okay attaching all the fibers together and the yarn is made so similar structure like yarn can be seen by this activity the process of making yarn from fibers is called spinning okay the process of making yarn from fiber is called spinning so today's our topic is spinning we will know what is spinning and we will discuss some topics related to spinning in this process fibers from a mass of cotton wool are drawn out and twisted as we have did in our activity the same thing is done but with the help of machineries this brings the fibers together to form a yarn a simple device used for spinning in hand spindle is called tuckling okay the sword like structure which you are seeing by my highlighter is tuckling okay a simple device used for spinning in a hand spindle are also called tuckling okay it is also called hand, hand spindle and tuckling another hand operated device used for spinning is charkha charkha we know we all know the charkha the gandhi bapu sir charkha use of charkha was popularized by mahatma gandhi as a part of independence movement we all know in the independence movement gandhi ji popularized the charkha he encouraged people to wear clothes made of home spun home made yarn terms as khadi we all know khadi cloth and it is very famous even today and shun imported cloth made in the mills of britain we have to oppose we have to ban the imported cloth made in the mills of britain to popularize and promote khadi the government of india constitute a body called khadi and village industries commission in 1956 from this you can know that how much khadi was important to our india okay that's why our government of india constitute a body called khadi and village industries commission in 1956 spinning of yarn on a large scale is done with the help of spinning machine as i have told you in the earlier slide that nowadays with the use of machine the cotton is twisted and yarn is made after spinning yarns are used for making fabrics 
yarn to fabric there are many ways by which fabric are made from a yarn the two main process are weaving and knitting so before understanding what is weaving and knitting let's do one activity activity 5 in your textbook you can also refer there take two sheets of paper of different color okay you have to take two sheets of two different color cut square pieces of length and width equal to 30 cm from each sheet you have to take two sheets which have to be of length and width of 30 cm now fold the sheets into half okay on one sheet draw lines as shown in figure 3.12a let me show you yes in one sheet you have to draw line as you can see in this picture a and has shown other has shown in figure 3.12b okay so in this way you have to draw on the second paper cut both the sheets along the dotted line what uh, whatever you have drawn whatever lines you have drawn as shown in figure in the real time you have to cut that dotted line and then unfold okay then you have to unfold weave the strips one by one through the cuts in the sheet of paper as shown in figure 3.12c as shown in figure when you will unfold this paper this green paper will look like this okay and orange paper paper strips will be formed so now what you have to do you have to pass the orange strip like this inside this and the over this okay you can ask your parents how you uh, how you have to do they will help you in this okay figure 3.12d shows the pattern after weaving all the sheets so after doing all this activity by taking two papers of same width drawing this type of lines on it and then cutting it then uh, doing uh, the strips through the second paper and the final sheet will be formed like this in a similar way two set of yarn are woven woven to make a fabric the yarns are much thinner than our paper strips of course we know that we have seen many clothes the yarns are not as thick as our strip similarly only yarns are uh, adjusted and a piece of cloth is made weaving of fabrics is done on loom we have uh, seen two words weaving and knitting so this is called weaving okay the activity which we have done is called weaving with paper strips the it is similarly done with the yarns weaving of fabric is done on looms the looms are either hand operated or power operated the picture you can see is the hand operated weaving done on the looms the next topic is knitting have you noticed how sweaters are knitted yes obviously if you have a grandmother you have seen they were they are making sweaters for you okay that process is called as knitting in knitting a single yarn is used to make a piece of fab, uh, fabric okay a single yarn a single long yarn okay the fabric is uh, yarn is used to make a piece of fabric have you ever pulled the yarn from a tore paper of socks if you will do this you find that a single yarn is uh, used for making the socks okay if you have time and if possible you can do this activity but it is not at all compulsory a single yarn gets pulled out continuously as the fabrics get unraveled okay 
if you start pulling out a single yarn then the whole cloth will be torn out socks and many other clothing items are made of knitted fabric knitted knitting is done by hand and also machine and also on machine so what is the difference of weaving and knitting i think you have understand in weaving two or more than two yarns are uh, used for making fabric and in knitting only one yarn only one yarn is used to make a whole cloth or whole fabric weaving and knitting are used for making different kinds of fabric these fabrics are used for a variety of clothing items obviously the fabric the main component of our cloth is fabric so this fabric is used for making many many different kinds of cloth items history of clothing material so starting from the old ages so we will see what they were using as their cloth what they were using for their uh, living hood have you ever wondered what materials people used in ancient times for clothes you have seen the tarzan cartoon in which he used this type of leaves for covering his body yes we are talking about that time it it appears that in those time people used the bark and big leaves of the tree or animal skins and furs to cover themselves you know very well bark big leaves okay animal skins and furs to cover themselves we have seen in many cartoons after people began to settle in agriculture communities they learned to weave twigs and grass into mats and basket so a bunch of barks a bunch of barks are known as twigs so this is the photo of twigs and grass into mats and basket you very 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 well know what is the meaning of mats and basket so i am not explaining that vines and animal fleece or hair were twisted together into a long strand so what is the meaning of vines this is vines in gujarati we say vela velo okay vines animal fleece or hair were twisted together into long strands these were woven into fabrics okay in uh, our time yarns are woven into making fabrics and at that times vines and animals hair were twisted into long strands and they were used to make fabrics the earlier indians wore fabrics made out of cotton that grew in the region near the river ganga so in the asian time the cotton we uh, was found out at the river ganga at a region near ganga and the earlier indians were using that flax flax is also a plant that gives natural fiber so this is a flax plant you can see in this picture this is the flax plant which is which gives us natural fibers we have seen earlier different kinds of fibers natural and synthetic flax is also a plant that gives natural fibers in ancient egypt cotton as well as flax combination of two cotton and flax were cultivated near the river nile river nile and were used to making fabrics okay so with the times different materials you were used for making fabrics in those days stitching was not known okay at that time tailor were not there or they were not knowing how to stitch cloth people simply draped their fabrics around different body uh, different parts of their body whatever they get whatever the raw materials that uh, vela leaves everything they get they just wrapped it around their body many different way ways of draping fabrics were used 
with the invention of the sewing needles people started stitching fabrics to make clothes stitched clothes have gone through many variations since this invention but is it not amazing that even today sarees dhoti lungi or turban is used as an unstitched piece of a fabric that is not stitched fabric that is made from a single fabric no cutting no stitching is done into saree dhoti and lungi turban okay so it is amazing that even today we are using some clothes which are unstitched just as there is a large variety in the food eaten or all over uh, our country a large variety exist also in fabrics and clothing item we have seen in the second chapter food and its component large varieties of food is seen in our country similarly different kinds of fabrics and clothing items is also seen in our country so here here we are winding up today's lecture i have completed chapter number 3 fiber to fabric i will see you in the next lecture thank you